Good morning. Yeah, there we go. They, uh, I wondered if we could hear. How is everyone this morning? Are we all ready? Is everything kind of, are we, are we all got prepared for Christmas? No, 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 yes, no, no. Are, 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 like, are the presents all bought? That they are. It's, uh, see, uh, you, knew, you knew that Anne Rimmer would have them all bought and wrapped. Yeah, by now, well organized. Yeah, I've started thinking about presents. Yeah, that's where I am. <laughs> I'm with Alan. It's really great to have you here this morning. Really great that we can come and join in worship together. There's lots of things happening over the next few weeks. We want to celebrate Christmas together as best as we can. A few uh, notices, you'll have noticed the rolling notices. Um, particularly a couple of things to draw your attention to. We're starting to do some warm spaces. Look, you know, as, as um, the weather is definitely getting colder at the moment. Anybody notice that? Yeah, the weather's getting colder. And uh, quite frankly, it costs a small fortune to heat, to heat at home, doesn't it? So we're, we're, we're just heating up the yeah. church hall. And if people want to come and join us, uh, come and play some games, chat, have a cup of tea, then there's a, there's a warm <coughs> space inside. Invite your friends, invite anybody that thinks I could do with a, an afternoon that's warm rather than shivering at home then come and join us and be a part of that on Thursday afternoon in the church hall. Uh, next Saturday, we have a Follow the Star community trail. There's different characters from the Nativity story hiding around Berska. We encourage you to bring the family, bring some friends, go for a wonder, take the kids, enjoy that, and we'll be starting and ending here inside in another warm space in the West End. Come and join us for a cup of tea. Come and spend some time with people. Enjoy that, that kind of lead up to Christmas together. Um, also, on Sunday, the 11th of December, next Sunday, we have a live nativity. Sounds exciting. That's, I need a bit, bit, bit of a bigger woo for that one. A live nativity. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, been fight. again, that's something for all of the family. Come and bring them. Be a part of that. We want to invite as many people as we can. Look, this Sunday particularly is going to be a bit shorter, and to be a bit shorter, I need to say less, um, which you'll be pleased about probably. And we want to invite people. We want to invite friends. We've got a whole load of flyers there. We want to send them round streets. We want you to pick up a bundle and send them round a street near you. And we want you to think about a few friends that you think, I, I just want them to know a little bit more about who Jesus is at Christmas rather than uh, Coca-Cola adverts and uh, John Lewis adverts and all of the rest that goes on. I want them this Christmas to know a little bit about who Jesus is. And we want to stick that in to all of our services. So, so a big invitation, a great invitation we want over uh, this. And then um, I'm looking for other notices. I think that's it. What else have I forgotten? Somebody will wave at me and tell me what I've forgotten. If you don't want to do a trail around the village, there is a quiet day on Saturday at the studio. And that because of the live nativity as well, there will not be an 11 o'clock service next week. We're encouraging everyone to go to the live nativity, so there won't be an 11 o'clock service. We're encouraging everyone to go to the live nativity. We also have a contemporary carol service for those that come along to the evening service as well. So hopefully that one will be quite good fun. I think we, we thought it was quite good fun, didn't we, Pete? Yeah, so we'll be all right. Enjoy and invite people to that. Let me pray and then we'll stand and sing. Lord God, I thank you that we can meet in your house as your people. Lord, I pray as we start to prepare to meet you and to encounter you as you came to earth at Christmas, Lord. I pray that we can invite others. And we can be invited ourselves to meet you, to be in your presence. Amen.
please take your seats. Now, you might think when you see this table at the front that Chris has gone a bit rogue on the whole communion thing, yeah, and decided that tea towels are better, yeah, forever. But this is our taste test this morning, yeah. We've got different things to taste, um, and, uh, and we're, we're wondering what you like. Whether you are dandelion and burdock, yeah, are you, are you, are you, are you Point over this way if you're like a, yeah, 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 definitely, dandelion and burdock. Point over that way, yeah, if you're like, no way, yeah, that's awful. Is anybody undecided? Anybody undecided? Well, that's really interesting, Graham. Yeah. (laughs) Because undecided people get a taste test. So um, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna send that along to Graham in a moment to see how we are. Gra- Graham's got the uh, dandelion and burdock. How about Red Bull? Anybody had Red Bull? Yeah, if, if, if you're like yes for Red Bull over there. If you're no for Red Bull, has, has, has somebody never tried Red Bull? There we go. <laughs> I did. There is a little, I'd said to, to Chris this morning, there's a little sign on the back, don't give this to Sam Whitehead. Yeah, <laughs> he's enthusiastic as enough. Enough. There we go. So we're going to pour. We're going to see if, if we like some Red Bull. How about um, all the way from Scotland, made of girders? Yeah. How about a bit of Iron Brew? Who likes Iron Brew? Who doesn't like Iron Brew? Go on. And then if we got someone I can pick on that can try and taste a bit of Iron Brew, go on. Who's going to? Who's going to taste some Iron Brew? Yeah, there you go. John's going to try the Iron Brew. We're going to get you all up together at the end. We're going to decide whether these are, are worth it. How about, interesting, vanilla Coca-Cola? Ooh. <laughs> Everyone's thinking the same. Vanilla Coca-Cola. Um, I, I, you know, yeah. Who thinks yes? Who's tried it? <laughs> John's tried it. Who thinks, yeah, vanilla Coca-Cola? Who thinks no vanilla Coca-Cola? Okay, who's going to give it a go? <laughs> That's it, Dolge is there. You're going to try vanilla Coca-Cola in a moment. <laughs> um, how about, here we go, we've got Jamaican ginger beer. Oh, Jamaican ginger beers. Oh, there's quite a few people that like that one. There might be some people that decide they're undecided. So then they can come and try it. So I'm going to need a volunteer to come and try. Who's going to come and try Jamaican ginger beer for me? Yeah, there you go. Caroline's going to give that one a go. It is non-alcoholic. I think it is anyway. I don't know. My dad used to drink loads of this at Christmas. Um, okay, Rio Tropical. It says it's orange, guava, apricot, mango, and passion fruit. Who's 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 it? Yeah, oh, there's quite a few yays on that. Yeah, a few nay. Anybody has a nay for that one? Don't quite fancy that. Who is brave enough to come and try that one? Yeah, you can come forward and try that one. We'll decide what we like. And then the final one. That I, I must admit, I've never tried myself. Sarsaparilla. Who's tried sarsaparilla? There's quite a few people like that. Who's a no on sarsaparilla? And who's my lucky volunteer? <laughs> what on earth is that? Well, that's interesting you should say what on earth is that. <laughs> Be sure. <laughs> so come on, let me have volunteers. We're going to decide if we like these or not. You can come forward. <laughs> you don't need to drink all of it, Pete. All right, it's not a challenge. <laughs> there we go. There's Graham. You can have the dandelion and burdock, and you can decide which way we go. So, uh, Caroline, ginger beer is that one? Fruity one? Pete's on the sarsaparilla. Uh, Red Bull, vanilla Coke. Vanilla Coke. There you are. <laughs> no, that's not. Oh, that's it. No, that one's vanilla Coke, isn't it? There we go. I'm getting confused. That one's the ginger beer. That one's the vanilla Coke. This one's the Red Bull. I'm thinking. 
Oh, it's all right. That's fine. I was about to just down some Red Bull and then go into a sermon. Yeah. Be, that would make it quicker, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so go on. What do we reckon? Go on. Let's down it. Let's decide if we like it. Okay. So thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you don't. <laughs> Thank you. We will put your drinks down. That's great. Thank you so much. If you like it, you can take it with you. You are more than welcome. <laughs> there you go. Well, there you go, dolls. You can take the rest with you. There you go, because you're, you're helping me out this morning. <laughs> Thank you for all those brave people. How was sarsaparilla, Pete? Is it any good? Is it not? I've not, I've not tried it before. I might give that a go. It's been like cough medicine, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, we did, we're, the reason why, to, to be fair, David <laughs> had this idea. David's not so well this morning, so we're filling in. Is, is As we're coming up to Christmas, we want people to taste and see if the Lord is good. Look, there's all these other things, and, and some of them, yeah, you might not like dandelion and burdock there. Red Bull, I can understand, is just full of sugar and caffeine, quite frankly. But it's quite good if you need to do an essay at the last minute. You, you start to shiver a little bit as you go. Yeah, but, you know, there's still those things. You might like it, you might not. But you know what? If you've never tried it, you don't know. And there's a whole load of people who've never really thought who Jesus is. And as we're coming up to Christmas, and as we're coming to a time of encounter, that's the point of our invitation is to say, well, look, you don't need to necessarily like it. Yeah, you might not. You might. But how about you just taste and see? Because, you know, I think the Lord is good. And I want you to know who he is. So I'm going to invite the band up. Uh, they're going to, um, a little bit better than Dandelion and Burdock. Uh, they're going to sing uh, Water into Wine. Yeah, we might like that, <laughs> that difference. Yeah, uh, and that God can come and change us. So we'll stand together and we'll sing together. Yes, I should say, well done, Kerry. I put that in for about there. If somebody can volunteer for me to just light the Advent candles, I'm, I'm going to pick on somebody. There you go. You can come. In. Do you want to come and light the candle with me? There we go. Yeah. Wait a minute here. There we go, well done.
as Graham comes and just reads the scripture for us, we can take our seats. The reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, from verses 40 to 46. And if you want to read it in the Bibles, it's on page 1064. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathaniel asked. Come and see, said Philip. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Graham. Thank you for reading that. Uh, a little extended on that Bible reading. All these people that come and follow Jesus, Andrew and Peter and Philip and Nathaniel. You might notice the big headline this week on the census. We all noticed that, did we? Yeah, that, that now there is less than 50% of the nation who decide that they are a Christian. You know, there's different reactions to that. We can feel that that's sad. We can feel that, you know, well, you know, the church needs to get their act together or, or whichever, all those reasonable reactions. My reaction, I just thought people are being a bit more honest. If I thought, I thought actually just people are being a bit more honest. Because, you know, sometimes you can go with, with something that you think is really great and you want to tell everybody. You know, maybe you watched a movie or something, you want to tell everyone. And, then, and someone says, oh, yeah, I've seen that. And it kind of it kind of takes some thunder out of your fire, doesn't it? When somebody said, "Oh, now I've seen that. I know all about that. That's fine," but you're like, "No, but there's something really brilliant in it." They go, "Yeah, yeah, 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 yeah," yeah, and they move on. And sometimes I feel that, you know, in this nation, we've got people that say, "Oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. I know all of that," and you're thinking, D "Do you? Have Have you read the Bible? Because you don't seem that excited about it. Because this is good news, you know. This is really good news." That God sent his son to earth to be with us. It ain't just a nice story. It ain't just a, a good advert by John Lewis. It's something mind-changingly amazing. It changes the world. And, you know, and if people are just looking at this Christian thing and going, oh, yeah, 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 I've ticked the box. You know, like Christian is, being a Christian isn't about ticking, ticking the box, is it? It's about something much more, more, much more than that. And if you'd have seen Jill Duff this week was interviewed on Good Morning Britain talking about it. And she was lovely and positive and even the interviewer quite ended up smiling. Yeah, because she had a smile and she said, well, yeah, that is. But, but people are spiritual. People have questions. People are seeking meaning in life and they're seeking truth. And, and we think the church can, can give them something about that. Yeah, I want to push forward. So I want us to be down about that sense. So I wanted to, to say there's loads of people that we can go and tell who Jesus really is and they can come to know who he is. They, they can meet him. They can learn him. They can know about him, discover him, and hopefully they can follow him. 
you know, Simon Peter met Jesus and they introduced him to Philip and he changed their lives. And then they come along to Nathaniel. And it's, I've said this before, one of my favorite bits of scripture, that bit they say, Nazareth, can anything good come from Nazareth? You know, and maybe some people say, you go to church. Can anything really good happen there? Can that really change something in my life? Is that really relevant to me? And I think that's the question that a whole load of people are asking. So how are we going to help them? You know, and we could do lots of different explanation. We could sit there and explain the whole story and we could work out a whole load of theology and we could work out, you know, why good people die and all of that. We could try and explain all that. Actually, what happens in this story is he just says, come and see. Come and see. Come and discover for yourself. Come and see who this Jesus is. Because I, I know I say he's this. But what do you think? Yeah, how can you? And that's the point of our invitation this Christmas. We're not telling people this, that we've got this wonderful explanation ourselves. We've discovered something about who Jesus is. We're saying, I'm coming along. Yeah, because it's good news. Well, how about you come and join me? Yeah, and come and see who Jesus is. That's the invitation we're holding out to people. You know, I uh, when I was in, in Oldham, I possibly told this story before, it's one of the best moments that I had as, as you kind of get involved leading churches or projects. And you, um, you, what you want is that people come and ask you. And I had this one morning on a Monday morning at nine o'clock where I was a bit grumpy that someone knocked on the door, uh, a lad Jordan. And, and, and as I opened the door, he said, oh, hi, uh, Chris, I, I, lead, I know you lead the church around there. Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, well, I'd like to become a Christian. What do I do? Oh, I said, oh, I'll put the kettle on. <laughs> then we can talk about that one. I think I've got something on this and quickly had to learn what we're going to say. You know, how are we going to do this person? Actually wants to become a Christian. And I, would you want to do it now? Y yeah, yeah, if that's all right. Yeah, yeah, I think that's all right. Yeah, we can do that. And it was an amazing morning. And I spoke to, to Jordan, and we had this wonderful conversation. Jordan, um, lovely lad. He'd had a bunch of issues. He'd gone off. Um, he was quite a bright lad, but he'd, he'd flunked his, his um, GCSEs. So he decided to run off to join the army. And he joined the army, um, had a bit of fun, but ended up getting quite down and depressed and, and into a bit of an addiction issue. And he, he got chucked out of the army. So like everything seemed to have gone downhill for him. And someone just said, why don't you go along to the church and see what they can do? So he just came along. He just came and saw. He said, I think I'd like to become a Christian. I want to give that one a go. Yeah, and he did. God changed his life. Yeah, God changed his life. He got him off addiction. You know, and, and, he, and he came to me a few months later and and says, oh, Chris, I think I'd like to go and study theology. Oh, all right. <laughs> that's, a, that's a bit of a change there, Jordan. Um, I didn't really expect that one. And I tried to, if I'm honest, I tried to talk him out of it. <laughs> uh, but he was insistent, um, went along, um, got his degree in theology, uh, went off and did a master's. He sent me his master's dissertation. I didn't understand it. Yeah. <laughs> And he's presently, he, he, he's presently still studying for a PhD in theology. Yeah, and he works with homeless addicts in Manchester for the Salvation Army. God changed his life. Yeah. Because he just came and saw. He came and saw what God could do in his life. And God did. So like if you're this week and we're sending out invitations and you have people in your mind that you know that you just want to say, just come and see. You don't need to do it all yourself. You don't need to do all the explanation. All you need to do is say, look, these are some of the things that are happening. We're going to talk about Jesus this Christmas because, look, it's about Jesus Christmas. Yeah, come and see. Come and see how he can change you. Come and see who he really is. We've got a, a contemporary carol service on um, next Sunday evening. It might be for some of the young adults, might be something that's brilliant, something that really touches them. We've got traditional carol services, we've got the trail, we've got an absolutely bonkers Chris Dingle service. I know because my wife's planning it. And, uh, <laughs> I had to go and order lots of really strange stuff off app Amazon yesterday. And we've got stuff on Christmas Day. We just want to say to people, 
just coming to him with that simple invitation. Let me pray. Lord God, you came from heaven to earth to show us who you are, to show us your love and to show us your power. And you ask us to follow you. Lord, I pray that we come and see you this Christmas. And Lord, in all the friends and family and streets that we might visit and the leaflets that we might hand out and conversations that we have, we can hold that in our mind. Come and see, because we want to introduce people to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. And I think we have some prayers. Yes, we do. (laughs) Jeannie, come and do some prayer for us. pray together. Look into our prayers today and face on the Advent candles, which are symbols, jewels of hope, peace, love, and joy. Heavenly Father, as we prepare for Christmas, help us to find time in our busy lives for quiet thought and prayer, that we may reflect on the wonder of your love and allow the story of the Saviour's birth to penetrate our hearts and minds. We live in difficult, challenging times, which can cause anxiety, stress, and worry for many. May the message of hope burst into our lives, bringing help, hope, healing, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray with hope, too, for the many troubled, dark areas of our world, remembering those living in countries wracked by conflict, famine, disease, and poverty. We remember those who are persecuted for their faith and for those who are victims of crime and violence. Jesus, Prince of Peace, look with compassion and mercy on our hurting unjust and troubled world and bring unity and peace. Help us, too, to be peacemakers in our own homes and in our families, at our places of work, school, college, or wherever we meet people, so that the message of peace and goodwill of Christmas can find a place in the hearts of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for friends and family who are ill at this time and remember them in the quietness of our hearts. So we especially pray for David this morning and we think of Tracy too. So just a moment please and perhaps just bring others into your hearts and your minds at this time. We need our prayer. We bring them to you, Lord, in the confidence that you listen and know their every need. And that your healing power is still the same today, yesterday and forever. Bless all that is being done for their recovery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who are grieving the loss of someone they love. Remembering especially the family and friends of Dave Harris, Grace Croft, Ian McFarlane, Beryl Johnson, Sheila Salmon, and Sheila Dixon. Encircle them in your loving arms, Lord, and grant them the promise to all who mourn, your peace that passes understanding, and your light that reaches into the darkest places of life. May the support of family and friends bring love, peace, hope, and help at this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those being confirmed this evening. Pour out your blessing and Holy Spirit upon them, Lord, as they take this next step of their faith journey. 
We have lots of different services and activities planned over the Christmas season, which all share the amazing and life-changing message that is God on earth as a tiny baby. Help us to reach out into our community and to share Jesus' love with others and to be eager to serve, support, pray and encourage others to come, taste and see. Fill us all afresh with your hope, love and peace. May our joy be deeper and infectious, our worship more real and our lives worthy of all that you've done for us through the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And Romans 15 reminds us, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And perhaps we can just join in the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Stand again as we <clears throat> sing together and as we encounter Jesus, those gorgeous words of this song, O come, O come, Emmanuel.
Thank you. Good to, good to have you guys here. How are you doing? Good. Have you, have you had good fun this morning? I like, I'm, I'm kind of looking around. I'm seeing some bits of maybe <coughs> chocolate or biscuits. What have, what have you got there? What have you been doing? Decorating gingerbread men. That's, that's brilliant. I'm making some decorations. Gingerbread men. I really like gingerbread men, you know. <laughs> Look, tell. guys, that's, <laughs> thank you so much for you guys. It's really good. I'm going to say a blessing, but I'm just going to just explain why, because uh, we're finishing early today, because like I did a short sermon, guys, you'd be happy with that one. All right, and we're doing it because we want to go out and invite people. We've been talking about inviting people today, inviting people to know who Jesus is at Christmas. So maybe you guys can join us. I want to encourage everybody else. We've got a whole load of flyers at the back that, that um, some people have really brilliantly split up into little bundles. Then it's the right <laughs> amount of leaflets for a street at a time. We're encouraging people this morning not to kind of hang around having a cup of tea for ages, but to go out this morning and to deliver some of those leaflets, find a street, take a bundle or two and, and go and deliver them to a street. Also, take a few extra and think of maybe just five or so people that you know, that you want to personally say, come and see who Jesus is this Christmas time. Just come and see. Give it a try. Taste and see. See if this is something that you're interested in. You know, there's a whole load of people who just want that opportunity to try and work out what this whole thing is about. Is that all right? Are you guys going to help us maybe as well? You guys could do some of that, couldn't you? Thank you. Oh, good. Great to have you guys in as well. That's lots of exciting stuff. Let me pray and say a blessing. Lord, the blessing of God Almighty be on us and among us and with us, Lord. Let us go out this morning to pass on the news of your good news and your blessing to all of those that we meet. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 